Hi everyone, welcome to this lecture. This lecture I'm going to talk about uh, saliva secretion. I'm going to talk about saliva secretion. This lecture is one of the series of lectures which I'm doing under the digestive system, physiology of the digestive system, or if you want the digestive system, you can call it the gastrointestinal system. So here I'm going to look at some about 10 review questions. Okay, I've, I've uh, decided to prepare these 10 questions so that uh, the, the points may be emphasized. Okay, it's easy for students to, to remember questions and answers than just to give you information. Okay, so I've just try, uh, structured this uh, topic in form of uh, questions. So the first question is, uh, what is saliva? That's the first question. What is saliva? Okay, so saliva, it is an extracellular fluid which is produced and secreted by the salivary glands in the mouth. I think that's the best way of defining saliva. It's, a, it's an extracellular fluid. The key word is extracellular fluid which is produced and secreted by salivary glands. And these salivary glands, they are located in the mouth. Okay, so saliva is uh, basically uh, secreted in the in the mouth. Okay, it's a complex fluid. Okay, let's go to the next question. What are the unique properties about saliva, which is different from other bodily secretions? What are the unique properties of saliva? which is different from other body secretion. <clears throat> Number one, you, you can talk of volume. A normal health person should secrete at least 1,000 mils to 1,500 mils of saliva. It is secreted per day, which is approximately one meal per minute. That's a volume. Okay. In terms of reaction, saliva is slightly acidic with a pH of 6.35 to 6.85. Saliva is slightly acidic with a pH of 6.35 to 6.85. So water is more of a neutral fluid, but saliva is more of acidic. And then when you look of specific gravity, it ranges between 1 0.002 to about 1.012. Okay, if, if in case you've forgotten, what is specific gravity? Specific gravity, if you remember very well from physics, it is the ratio between the density of an object to a reference substance. So you are just comparing density of an object to a reference substance. So in this case, we are comparing the density of saliva to the density of water. Okay. So saliva is thicker than water. Just from this uh, density, slightly thicker. Because water, the density of water is one gram per centimeter cubic. Okay. So saliva is almost similar in terms of water density. It differ, it's just differs by some decimal points, as you can see. And then we have a tonicity of saliva. Saliva is hypotonic to plasma. Saliva is hypotonic to plasma. If I may also remind you of tonicity. Tonicity, usually we are referring to the concentration of a solution compared to another solution. That is tonicity. And there are three things that we discussed under tonicity. If you remember the, the basic principles, we talked of hypotonic, isotonic, and hypertonic. So when we say saliva is hypotonic, it means it has a lower concentration of solutes when you compare it to plasma. It has a lower concentration of solutes when compared to plasma. In other words, saliva has uh, uh, more water content as compared to, to plasma. 
Okay, so these are some of the unique properties of saliva. Okay, which is different from other bodily secretions like uh, gastric secretion, which is secreted from the stomach, and pancreatic secretions. Okay, just for your information, the, the gastric secretion in terms of pH, it is between 1 to 3.5. We'll talk about it later on. But for saliva, it is 6.35 to 6.85. Alternatively, when you look at the pancreatic secretion, the pH, it's 8. It's 8 to about uh, 8.3. What does it mean? It is more of an alkaline. Okay. So when you compare the acidity of saliva, pancreas, pancreatic secretion, and gastric secretion, Saliva, it's on the acidic side. Okay, let's look at another question. So this same saliva which is produced by the body or by the salivary gland, what is, their, what is its function? What role does it play? Okay, what role does it play? Okay, saliva is an important... Um, secretions it's an important secretion number one it in initiates digestions particularly of starch why because in saliva there is amylase which is an enzyme that breaks down the starch number two it serves as a solvent for the molecules that stimulate the test buds it serves as a solvent for the molecules that de stimulate the test buds for us to, to test anything, be it a drug, be it food, any substance, first of all, it has to dissolve in saliva. Okay. Number three, saliva aids speech by facilitating movements of the lips and tongue. For me to be talking the way I'm talking is because of uh, lubrication which I'm getting from saliva. Okay. Number four, saliva facilitates swallowing. Exactly, which is more of lubrication. It's facilitated swallowing. You cannot, it's difficult to swallow if there is a reduced saliva secretion. Also, saliva has some antibacterial action. Not only antibacterial action, it has some antifungal action, antiviral actions. Okay, so it's, it has some kind of antibiotic effects. And usually the, the antibiotic effect is due to the presence of these substances. Which substances are those? Um, lysoz lysozymes, peroxidase, and lactoferrin. Okay. So this is just a, a diagram to explain the multifunctionality of saliva. Okay. It's, it helps in digestion due to the presence of amylase, mucins, lipase. It helps in buffering. Buffering, we can call it, uh, it prevents sudden change in pH. Okay. So why, how? Because of presence of carbonic anhydrases. These are enzymes. We're going to see how they act. Histatins. Okay. It has antibacterial actions, antiviral actions, antifungal action, tissue coating, lubrication and viscoelasticity, etc. So it's, it's, it's just correct to say that it has multifunctionality or it has multifunction. Okay. This goes to, to this other question. What would be the effect of reduced saliva secretion to the normal function of the body? So if, if it's in an exam, you are asked to dis discuss the effects of uh, xerostonia or the effect of reduced saliva secretion. Okay. You should not get confused. Once you know the function of saliva, it is easy to predict the effects of uh, absence of saliva. Okay, the visible thing here you can see, you've seen this tongue, the way it is looking. It is cracked. 
Okay, this is not the only effect. There are several effects. There will be trouble in chewing because saliva is needed for chewing. It's needed for testing. It's needed for swallowing. It needed for speaking. Okay. There will also be infections which may lead to parotid gland enlargements. Halitosis. You remember halitosis? Halitosis is bad breath. Okay, there are people with... Uh, there are people with uh, bad breath. Usually it's due to reduced saliva secretion, but mostly we'll talk about it later. It can be due, it can originate from the deep in, in the in GIT. And they can also cause oral candidiasis. Candida, if you remember candida, it's a fungal infection, which is caused by yeast. So there's a lot of things that you can say when you are asked to describe the effect of reduced saliva secretion. Okay. Other things which I have not included here, uh, uh, there will be saliva gland infections, there will be ulcers of the tongue, and also uh, inflammation and, and cracking of the lips. Okay, all those things can occur. Okay, this condition affects about 10% of individuals. Okay, so the other effect, the, the other common effect of uh, reduced saliva secretion, okay, or the cause, usually it's noticed in uh, people that are receiving medication. Okay, in the hospitals, they are receiving medication. For example, somebody's on hypertension, hyper, uh, hypertensive drugs, antihypertensive drugs, they can cause uh, xerostomia, antihistamines, and also drugs that act on the central nervous system, the antidepressant drugs and diuretics can also cause uh, reduced saliva secretion. Okay. Also other conditions like stress, anxiety, conditions like Parkinson diseases, these are features where you've uh, reduced, we've noticed saliva secretion. Okay. Let's keep on moving. This same saliva, it's produced by glands. Name these glands. Okay, in such questions, when you're told to name the glands, you have to talk about the major salivary glands and the minor salivary glands. So the major salivary glands, we have the parotid glands, the submandibular glands. Where are they? Here. The other name is submaxillary glands and the sublingual glands, meaning below the tongue. Okay. But the largest of these is the parotid gland. Okay. But there are also some minor glands. And the minor gland secretes about 10% uh, of the volume of saliva. 10%. But they are, we're not saying they're not important. They are very important. But they are minor glands. Okay. So we can see we have the lingua minor glands. We have the buccal. The buccal glands. We have the, the palatine glands. They can be found in the soft and hard palate. That's why it's called palatine. You can see the coloration here. Okay. That's why they can be found. We also have uh, labia gland. You know labia are lips. So around the lips we have... So our lips, we have glands that secrete saliva. Okay. Okay, so this question is just asking, name these glands. So the major ones are the submaxillary glands, the parotid glands, and the sublingual glands. The minor ones, we have the lingua minor glands. We have the buccal glands, the palatine glands, and the labia. Okay. What is the, another question? The other question is on draw and describe the typical structure 
of the salivary gland. Draw and describe the typical structure of the salivary gland. Okay, a salivary gland looks like a bunch of grapes. A salivary gland looks like a bunch of grapes. So when we pick up one grape, this is what we're going to see. Okay, we are going to see the asinus. And the asinus is made up of asina cells. The asina cells, these are the functional unit of the salivary glands. Not only the salivary gland, these are functional unit of the exocrine glands. Because when we look at the, even the pancreatic glands, they have similar structures. They are also called asina cells. Okay. We are trying to answer the question. Draw and describe. So you can draw and then you start to describe. You start giving the functions. You start with the asina cells. What's the, what can you say about the asina cells? You can say the asina cells, these are the functional unit of the saliva, the salivary glands. They are the actual glands or they are the actual cells that are involved in the secretion and production of saliva. Okay. You go to the asinus. What is asinus? Asinus is just a group of asina cells. The asinus may have 8 to 12 asina cells. Okay. Then you go to the myoepithelial cells. The myoepithelial cells, just from the word myo, muscles. So these are epithelial cells which are specialized to contract. That's why they are called myoepithelial cells. They have contractile abilities. They are found in mam not only in the salivary glands, but you can find them in the mammary glands, like the breasts. You can find in the sweat glands. And you can also find in the lacrimal glands. The lacrimal glands is located somewhere in the eyelid, somewhere there in the eye. Okay. So the myoepithelial cell, they secrete, uh, they, they wrap, they wrap around the asina cells such that when they contract or when they are under the neurostimulation, they will contract and squeeze the saliva out of the, of the salivary glands. We also have uh, intercalated duct. These structures, they are known to have uh, high proliferative abilities. What do we mean? They undergo mitosis. Okay. They, they harbor what we call the salivary gland pluripotential stem cells. They harbor what you call the salivary gland pluripotent stem cells. These, they give rise to the asina cells, they give rise to the myopithelial cells, and they also give rise to the striated duct, which are located somewhere there. Okay, and then what's the function of the striated duct? The striated duct, the most important thing that you can say here is that they regulate the secretion and reabsorption of electrolytes. Okay. Another thing you can say there is these striated ducts, they are impermeable to water. They are impermeable to water. Okay, so it's an it's a, it's they, they, these ducts they reabsorb electrolytes. So they are involved in the final modification of saliva. Okay. So before I go to describe blood supply to the salivary glands. Ensure that you've understood these few questions that we've tried to answer. Thank you.